Reginald here. It's been a minute, huh? We'll see if we can't fix that, but for today, I've got a few resource updates for you. I've got a totally updated data tide sheet with piles of data on Arbitase and all the necessary fixings to make everything work, and a new resource I've developed to help aid in understanding where the strengths and weaknesses of classes stand in relative station to one another, as well as their general ability in builds. Let's actually talk about that first part first, since it's new. This is talent math. Here is the sheet for it. Feel free to make a copy and modify that copy. Uh, the link will be in the description. The basics here is that I've broken out the damage, the finesse, you know, all these different components, attack speed, whatever, each into different nodes on the tree on separate pages so that you can find each individual item and figure out what works. Uh, the idea here is that it goes into additive columns for all the nodes together on this first row here. So this is a sum of all effective nodes. Uh, you can use this tool to create build comparisons. As you can see here, I've got an early Arbitase build and a current meta-ish build here for Arbitase. Uh, and this will allow you to have some pretty neat uh, comparisons. I did a little sum at the end. This may not be the best way to do this, by the way, but it lets you get a like quick comparison of the relative power of things. I did have to use discretion to determine what nodes do and don't count here. There are a couple of edge cases that I did exclude or didn't exclude. You'll be able to see them in my uh, actual labeled values here. Um, for example, finesse is really anything that is weak spot only, including weak spot damage, quick crit weak spot damage, finesse stats, where mentioned by name. I mean, it goes on. Uh, there's one specific case where I didn't uh, include plus damage, especially the ones on the Arbitase tree for boss only damage, where it's like 30% boss damage. That number is really big on paper, but it only affects a single enemy. And it's just, you know, it just didn't seem worth putting on the tree because it would weight your builds too heavily in the wrong direction if you put that on and thought it was like a really powerful buff when it's really uh, local, right? Uh, it also doesn't really count how hard or easy a node is to trigger the effect, for example. Like, I don't know, there's there's lots of different issues in here where it's like kill five groaners in 15 seconds on the third Tuesday of each month, but only on a harvest moon for 15% damage to all enemies. And in that case, this actually does get the same rating as just like 15% damage on heavy attack or something like that. Uh, that's... I wasn't sure how else to compare this quickly. It is just a quick comparison tool. I am ultimately looking at peak potential, not uptime with this chart, so there are limitations. And if that wasn't enough caveats for you, here's a few more warnings. This chart is a blunt tool. It is not very sophisticated. It is meant to give you a snapshot picture for where to start looking for problems, either in your build, or in my case, in the case of balance of the game. Uh, let me give you like a super precise example of what I mean. If I were to take Desperation and Disdain instead of Until Death and Holy Revenant on a Zealot build like this Zealot build, this build would actually look better because the damage would be higher, the melee damage would be higher, but it turns out that build is way worse because Until Death and Holy Revenant are amazing and they don't have a place on this chart. So I hope that explains what I'm getting at. If you use this tool, it can be handy. However, it isn't foolproof, so please just like, I don't know, pay attention to what you're doing and understand what the trees actually do. Uh, it also doesn't account at all for ultimate abilities or nodes like survivalist or anything like that. So the abilities section can add a lot of juice to some builds that isn't visible here. All right, with all of that out of the way, let's do a cursory overview of what kind of cool neato information I gain. For example, if we compare uh, the early builds of Arbitase that I put together, and these are not bad builds, they got me through Havoc 40 just fine. We can see that one of the big standouts here is my total damage is only about 55 to 60 percent if you account for the strength, whereas my current meta builds actually have over 100 percent if you account for attack speed boosts uh, worth of I guess that's not fair, but like if you have like, yeah, over 100 percent, 15 percent melee damage, 100 percent damage, that's crazy. Overall, the sum of the points value is higher as well, though obviously there's a bit of caveat required there. So you can kind of see how much better uh, later builds are than uh, early builds. Uh, in the aggregate, we can also see some interesting things like uh, the total potential value of some of these trees is much more heavily weighted towards Arbitase and Ogryn, uh, Ogryn being huge, by the way. Uh, whereas there's much more locality down, about almost 300 points on Zealot, Veteran, and Psyker. Now, again, there are lots of nodes in these trees that are more like twists on gameplay rather than outright power, and so I think that makes a big difference uh, for these trees in ways that are not evident on paper. 
Uh, we can also see some other things, like uh, if you look at the veteran, he's Head Clicker Man. Uh, Psyker does, in fact, do magic stuff. And Zealot does melee damage and has insane uh, toughness damage reduction options. So that's all neat. Uh, but we're not really talking about balance today. I just wanted to give you some tools before I go on my way. Uh, for Data Tide, if you haven't seen this before for some reason and you've been following my channel this whole time, where have you been? Uh, this is a tool that I built based on a testing apparatus I designed and that has been refined over time and has benefited from mods being created around it. Uh, thank you, Little Mond. Uh, all the links of that will be in the description below, but it lets you run solo lobbies and test into batches of enemies with Damnation or Havoc targets. The point of this is to collect time to kill values in a comparable way. This lets me, or you, or anyone really, test builds or weapons against the best known, but also against yourself. It's a good way to practice against certain dangerous enemies or see where your kit and skills don't hold up for the challenge. Anyway, it is updated for our bites, so go ham. I want to say something specific in warning here too. The leaderboard is the best possible time collected, but not the norm or average in all cases. It's not even a safe time. Even the general times on the data entry page do lack a lot of context, so they have more. And it doesn't always tell you the context of the player who fought into that target, what they did right or wrong. Uh, this tool should be understood to have flaws. You're going to actually have to play games to validate your results. Believe it or not, I actually play a lot more than I test, but testing is very useful for checking your gut and making quantifying the difference between certain weapons. Testing is better when there's more people doing it, since different people develop different skills and techniques. Be advised that safety, as in how much damage you're able to take or not take in a fight, and how easy that is, is a real concern on some weapons, and that doesn't really show up on the leaderboard. Some of these best times are actually insanely dangerous weapons being used near death. It happens. Then uh, that won't show up on the leaderboard. Etc. 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 Okay, everyone, thank you for your time. Warm regards. Reginald. I would like to take a moment to provide a special thank you to a rando dude and Joseph Davison for being Oathmaker level members, and to Zimisk3 and Fluff. Also, a shout out to Vinny for continuing to support my channel whenever I do have time to stream. Hopefully, that will pick up again soon. Guys, genuinely, I really appreciate it a lot. It honestly is just so encouraging to have you guys supporting me like that, and it means a lot to me personally, so thank you. I hope to continue to bring you high quality content. I continue to do my best. So take care and I'll see you around. Thanks so much for visiting and bye-bye.